Hey guys, welcome to another video and thanks for your stunning response on my previous video about how to do fitness photo shoots. In this video, we are going to learn how to do fitness video shoots. And with that said, let's start on the first point that is scoping your video. So it is really important to know who is the video for and what is the video about. So it could be about a documentary, it could be promotional. So it is really important to know and nail down your audience. And with respect to that, build on the short list. So I'm much of a paper and pen person and that's why I really like to draw my short list but you can use any apps. With that, it really optimizes when you go for a shoot. Next up is lighting. So I use a Sony a7 III and the color profile S-Log2 so I need to overexpose everything by two stops. And if you're using an S-Log2, these are my settings. You can use a combination of natural light and continuous light or just continuous lights. But the placement of the lights are really important. For small spaces, I generally like to choose a corner with a big sort box at high power and use the shape and the walls to my advantage to reflect lights on my subject. In bigger spaces, I'll generally go with a two light setup, keeping at 45 degrees, one in the front, one at the back, and it is sometimes okay to show the light in the frame. I find it quite artistic, it depends on the test. In this setup, I always had my fighters move towards the light at 45 degrees versus just flat or move to the backside. Changing the camera angles and the position of the athletes within a confined space is really important, which ties me into the next topic is posing or moving your athletes and what angles you would take. There are several camera frames, but I'll divide them into four. Number one. It's your simple third person view, which is basically shooting a subject from a wider frame as if someone else is looking at them. Here, I really love to explore all sorts of framing and sometimes see through frames as well that I have at that moment, such as seeing through railings, chairs, racks, etc. Number two is your first person view. First person view is really helpful for fighters, boxers, or other contact sports. I like to do this in two ways. One, using a GoPro mounted over one of the opponent's head and exchange on each other's head. In that way, you can really get those fast first person view like in games. The other, I let my camera be the opponent and I sync my movements with my fighter or the athlete. And one really important thing to note is to get more back and forth movement as it is easier to keep your subject in focus than moving sideways. Number three, I like to call them as long shots. The idea during fighting shots or lifting shots is to create dynamics using the camera movement rather than solely depending on transitions. Like this one where I just run with my gimbal towards my lifter or here where I actually squat along with my squatter. And number four are your miscellaneous angles. I cannot really define them or categorize them but these are the angles or the frames where Think your character is looking at something and if you were sitting on the opposite side, what would your character see? One example of this is a top-down camera frame of your character doing a pull-up or your character doing an unracking of weights and you are seeing it through a railing. This really depends on one's creativity and comes through practice but a basic guideline would be to use frames and lines during such shoots. And one bonus tip with this is to capture those emotions and the various expressions of your athlete and that will really help you to stand out your video outside in the market. So once you're done with the shooting, next comes the editing. Sometimes you need to edit these videos for Reels, TikTok or sh YouTube shots. Even though with the rise in trend for the vertical format videos, I do shoot my videos wide for such projects. However, for editing them for vertical format, I use these wide videos in my timeline and set the sequence in Premiere Pro to be vertical. At times, I really like the white shots when I divide the vertical pen into three white panes for fitting them in the vertical format. So other than in-camera motions, you also gotta sometimes have to do motion during the post editing. This can be done in various ways. So the two effects that I use the most are number one, zoom. So let's select this footage, go to scale, then click on toggle animation. That will create an animation point on the footage and let's go to the end of the footage and put 230 for the scale. That's it. Now you have this zoom pan in cinematic shot. 
Number two is keyframing. So this is shot at 60 FPS and I want the kick to be faster for the impact. So right click the footage, scroll down to the show clip frames and time remapping and speed. Then we will select the paint tool and click around the start and the end of the kick. Then select the cursor tool or press V and as you take your cursor, you will have these double sided arrows. Push up for higher speed and let's settle for 281. Now our kick is faster than the rest of the shot. To make it look smoother, we will pull the ends of the slope to make the speed ramp more smoothly. You can also change the speed of the rest of the footage and with some adjustments, this is how it looks. I also like to get creative with overlaying multiple footages or film noise or camera frames for the first person or other relatable shots. So I have made countless videos on sound design and sound design is crucial to your videos. Be it the environmental sound or the machines or just alongside during the workout, every single bit is important. I generally use the epidemic sound for all my stock sounds, however some sounds that I find are unique like this fight at grunting or just a sequence of punch. I bring my mic along with me and I record this them separately on spot and clean them up during the editing for usage. And if you are interested and want me to share how I prepare my sound in Premiere Pro for using in the videos, do let me know in the comments. With that said, do not forget to create this amazing experience for your athletes during the shooting process. So to put it all together, know your audience and why you're making the video. Expose well your subject and use different kinds of lighting to enhance the physique of your character. Have a short list and don't be afraid to use creative and weird camera angles and get all kinds of perspectives and follow the motion of your athletes. Later enhance the visuals in post-processing and also put life to your videos with detailed sound design. So if you enjoyed the video, do not forget to hit the thumbs up button and smash the subscribe button as well. In the comments, let me know what other aspects you want me to cover about fitness photoshoots and until then, take care and I'll see you in the next video.